Hey, I'm Brienne, and this video will be a little bit different. It will not be a fully produced review, but rather one week where you follow me around with the Pixel 5, so you can really see how it fits into your day-to-day -day life and whether it's the right phone for you. But of course, there's still going to be some nice B-roll because I really enjoy shooting that. So let's go. I originally thought the black would be a bit bland, but due to the texture it's actually not that bad. The green is definitely more eye-catching though. While Google does put a lot of emphasis on the fact that the Pixel 5 is made from metal, in reality everything you feel is the soft touch plastic coating on top. It is still cold to the touch, but it otherwise doesn't feel that different from the Pixel 4 Ace. The buttons feel nice and tactile though, the camera sits almost flush as well, which is nice to see. And the size is just perfect, very compact thanks to the non-existent front bezels. The fingerprint sensor on the back is fast and nice in times where we need to wear masks, but because it's on the back you always need to pick up the phone off the table in order to use it, which is kind of meh. The headphone jack is not something I miss at all. The speakers are a bit special though, as the top speaker is one that vibrates the display. And that just means that you can't block it, but it's also very quiet. The bottom one is very high quality, but together they just don't form the best stereo effect. What I appreciated quite a lot after cooking is that I could just rinse the spills off the phone because it's of course water resistant. The main attraction of this phone is of course the front though. This bezel is 90 hertz screen that doesn't even have a chin is just awesome, even if all you use it for is just death scrolling Twitter while you should actually be working. I just can't stop looking at the front of this phone. It's hard to describe, but there's something strangely satisfying about same size bezels all around. The OLED screen itself is very good too. Punchy, bright, no complaints there. But the auto brightness sometimes takes a while to brighten the screen after you unlock the phone. That's kind of weird. Seems like a software thing though. The 90Hz refresh rate is something I appreciate as well, it just makes scrolling and the animations when flicking through things much smoother. And now you can actually use it too, but I'll talk about battery life a little later. As you probably already heard, the chip in here isn't the latest and greatest. And that technically means it's slower on paper than even the Pixel 3, but that's not something you can notice. Google knows how to optimize software and that shows. It does of course have the latest Android 11 and the new power menu definitely came in handy for me when wanting to pay with Google Pay or turn off my lights from the comfort of my bed. And what I find interesting is that despite the mid-range chip, not only is performance very great, but switching between apps is actually the fastest and smoothest I've seen on any phone, even compared to ones with the Snapdragon 865. Everything in the UI flies without stutters. The chip was a really good call to save money on Google's part, I feel, because it doesn't affect the experience of using the phone at all. 5G is, I guess, also something to talk about. And while shooting B-roll for this video in my home city of Hamburg, I had 5G reception pretty much the whole time. But of course, that's not necessarily representative of what you might experience. It is definitely nice to have for the future though, especially because this phone will get Android updates for a long time. And as somewhat of a stock Android fanatic, I also love the clean but playful look of the software on here. Phew, that was a long day. It's now like 8 in the evening. That means I was out like 10 hours shooting, doing work, and actually also forgot my camera batteries, which stole an additional hour for me. But the Pixel kept up. The battery life on this phone is actually pretty amazing with like six to seven hours of screen on time, and that should pretty much get you through every day, no matter what you do. And I never thought I would say this about a Pixel phone, but the battery life is actually one of the main selling points on here. The battery really is great. Even with 5G, 90 Hertz, and the always on display, I really enjoy enabled, but it isn't all sunshine and rainbows. What I am noticing is that charging definitely isn't fast. At 18 watts, this is not at all comparable to something like the OnePlus 8T, and that can definitely get annoying. But you do have wireless charging, which does make up for that somewhat, and you can even reverse wireless charge things like headphones, which is pretty cool. The slow charging did definitely get in my way once or twice when the phone was dead and I needed to leave. Just quickly topping it up for 5 minutes won't really get you anywhere. Killing the battery before the day is over, on the other hand, is actually pretty difficult. So on the weekend we were at a theme park and while I couldn't take my big camera in there to shoot, I could definitely take the Pixel 5 and test out the camera. And I think from the pictures that I'm going to show you, you can see that this is definitely the biggest selling point of this phone again. In addition to the main sensor, Google now finally gave in and also put in a wide-angle sensor, which was long overdue. And while others like Samsung and Apple have certainly caught up to Google in terms of image quality, there's just something about those super sharp and contrasty pixel photos that I still really like. And now you can also get that on an ultra wide. 
The pictures look pretty much the same as the main one, which is cool. Colors are natural and it never misses exposure or white balance. The pictures didn't really change from the Pixel 4, but they also don't have to. They still wow me more often than not. Nightset is awesome as always and works on all cameras. Selfies are still great too if you like the sharp and natural non-beautified look, but Google software still misses when cutting out the background sometimes. Video quality is fortunately much improved from before with actually great stabilization, finally 4K60 and better sound. And that slow motion nicely captured this drop tower as well. While editing this video, I think it's a good time to come to a conclusion. I think Google pretty much made the perfect package with the Pixel 5. Yes, charging isn't that fast and it doesn't feel that premium, but those things don't really stand out. Google really did well with saving on the chip because you just don't notice that. It's super fast, the screen is beautiful and smooth thanks to 90Hz, it looks nice, finally, the camera and software are amazing, and of course you get all the bells and whistles like wireless charging and water resistance. For 600 euros, it really is a great balance that doesn't skimp or overspend on anything. In terms of value on the Android side, you really can't do much better than Google's new Pixels. I don't know what else there's to say, I really enjoy using this phone. If you can find one, buy it, because apparently Google isn't making that many, unfortunately. If you enjoyed this video, you know which buttons to press. Don't forget to press that follow button on Twitter, and don't forget your mask when you leave the house. I'm Brian, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.